again. Welcome back. This is going to be lesson number six in our advanced CSS class. Uh, in this lesson, what we're going to do is we're going to begin a new project. And the project for this week is to create your own CSS framework. So here I am at the class syllabus. Let me actually go to the syllabus here. And we are on um, class number six right here, CSS frameworks. OK, so I'm going to click on that and it'll take us to some review questions at the top. And these questions have to do with CSS grid. So you can give these a try and put your answers in grade scope. So the three questions are here and they all use this markup. So imagine that you started with the markup above here and you need to arrange the child divs into two columns of equal size. So question number one, how could I create two columns of equal size and arrange all these four divs? Okay, question number two, using the same markup up here, can you arrange the child divs into four columns where the first column is 100 pixels, the second column is 50 pixels, the third column is four rems, and the last column is 120 pixels, okay? And the last one is a little open-ended. The idea here is you need to use grid template areas and define four grid cells and then map each of the divs a b c and d to a different cell in your grid template okay so give that a try and post your answers to um to gradescope and then we can talk about that in the comments or um in class okay so uh let's get started with our framework so to get started with the framework um we're going to take a look at some existing frameworks and kind of evaluate those frameworks and then we'll talk about creating our custom framework now the the you know frameworks that are out there in the world right now like bootstrap there and 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 material are um very complex they have like a lot of stuff in them and the, the people that have been working on them have been working on them for years so we're just going to work on this framework for a week so it's going to obviously be a smaller scale than bootstrap or foundation or material UI, right? Um, that said, I still think there's room for someone to make a new framework that uses a lot of newer CSS ideas and make something lightweight that um, is actually practical for people to use. So you could make, you could be making the next bootstrap, okay? So we're going to introduce a few ideas here that that are not in these frameworks, but we're also going to make our framework support some of the same features that these frameworks have. OK, so take a look at the frameworks and get an idea of what's there. So let's let's take a look. Right. I'm going to go to uh, Bootstrap and take a look. So here's Bootstrap. I'm going to go to the docs right here. And when I look at the docs, they have a few sections here. They have getting started, they have customized, they have layout, content, forms, components, helpers, utilities, and some other stuff, right? So essentially they have, you know, like this is like the content stuff in the framework. So let's go to, I'm gonna skip the layout, right? Because our framework is going to use Flexbox and Grid and it won't require special classes and markup for to you know to support grids okay and and other layout like that right we're going to simplify and i think it's going to be better for it um let's look at content right so i'm going to go to typography here and what i'm going to see first is that bootstrap styles the headings so these headings don't look like the default style okay and you just use the regular markup so what I'm seeing here is it's showing me a sample of the markup and then it's showing me what it's going to look like when I have the bootstrap um, framework connected to my website. OK, right. And they use a sans serif font. They don't use the default times. Right. Kind of looks a lot better. Right. So this is what the H1 through 6 looks like. They also have classes that let you apply those to other things. OK. Let's they also see they also have some display headings, right? So here's display headings. So this is just like big text that you can use when you apply this class name to a tag. Okay. 
Um, what else do they have? Oh, they have a lead. So the lead is like a paragraph that looks a little different from the other paragraphs, right? It's kind of hard to tell here because th there isn't another paragraph next to this one, but this one would look a little bit different. It would stand out from regular paragraphs, right? So you do that by saying paragraph class name lead, okay? Um, they have some text options down here. So for abbreviations, you know, it, this is what their abbreviation looks like. This is what their block quote looks like. You know, it really doesn't look that different. It's got a little bit of style to it, right? Um, they have some alignment classes. Let's take a look at their lists. So their lists look like this. You know, it's just got the hollow bullet point there, the circle, right? And you just use the UL and the LI, right? And they use list unstyled. Um, what else do we have here? I think that looks pretty good. Let's go to um, forms, right? So under forms, they have a bunch of different things. Let's go to uh, form controls, right? So their forms look like this. This looks a lot better than the default form, right? So hopefully you're getting the idea that we just need to add a few styles that make reasonable assumptions, okay? Right, we don't have to style things heavily, but we can give it a little bit of style. So really like this input right here looks different from the default style, right? Because it has a little bit of padding and then it has a different border style. Okay, so just a little bit of that, right? Um, down here, here's like another input, right? I guess they have inputs in large input and small, so you can do, you can kind of size them. Um, what else do we have here? Um, I guess they also have the file input, so it has this button right there, and they've styled that. Um, they have the color picker, right? Let's take a look at one of the other frameworks, right? So I'm going to go take a look at foundation here, and I'll open this one up in another tab. And um, let's go to um, the docs here. I want to go to the to the basic doc. So here we are, right? So let's again. We'll start with typography. So I'm going to go to typography here, and here is our base styles. So we have a header, right? Um, oh, and here's the headers H1 through six. These look a little different than Bootstrap. They must be using a different font, right? And the font sizes are a little different. Um, so here's the sizes here, right? Uh, what else do they have? So here's. Uh, some smaller text, I guess, right? Oh, here it is right here, right? Um, they don't, I guess they're, we can actually just look at their site. I bet it uses foundation, right? So here are their links that has a different color. It's not that default blue that you get, right? So they chose a color for that. Um, what else do they have? Let's go to controls. Let's go to look at buttons, right? So their buttons look like this basically a box, it's got some padding, it's got a color. Notice that the button here also has a, an extra class. So they use the class button to denote a button and that's blue. And then if you put success or alert on it, you get either green or red. So this is kind of like a warning and this is telling us that something positive is gonna happen, right? Um, so that looks pretty good. They also have some sizes for buttons. So you can do tiny, small, uh, large, expanded, and small, expanded. Okay, so here's the buttons there. Tiny, large, right? Um, so again, we don't have to do a lot here, but these buttons look a lot better than the default button that you get from HTML. So this is the goal is you need to make a style sheet that kind of makes some assumptions about what default style should be and what looks best. And then, you know, people can import that and get some base styles like we have here. Maybe we'll include a couple class names that they can use. And, um, you know, anybody could import your style and get something that looks better than the default HTML, okay? So that's, that's your goal. So um, why don't we get started on this in the next video? Or actually, you know, before, before we go there, let's do one thing. So I'm gonna go to the, um, the syllabus page here, and I'm going to download the starter code, okay? So this is the starter code for the framework, right? I'm gonna click on this link right here, and actually let me open it in its own tab right here, right? So here is the starter code, and there isn't really anything here. There's a couple extra files, but these are just extra things, right? 
Um, and then there's this HTML file. So this HTML file just has some default HTML in it that you're gonna use to mark up. So we'll link our, our style sheet here and it has a sample code for everything that you're gonna mark up. So let's download it. I'm gonna go here and go to download as zip, right? And then I'll go get my folder here. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put it in the folder over here, right? So I'll drag it over here because this is where I'm gonna be working. And I'm gonna change the name of this to CSS Framework Example. How about that, right? And let's take a look at what this looks like so we get an idea, right? And I'm gonna open this up in in the browser and this is what my page looks like right so it really doesn't look like much okay and what our goal what your goal is right okay and what we're going to talk about in class is if we were to use um, foundation right instead of having you know buttons that look like uh, I have some buttons in here somewhere um, yeah, there's a couple buttons right there. There's submit button, delete, and go button. Let me zoom in on that, right? So instead of my buttons looking like this, I wanna make them look like this, right? And you know, the text like we saw, you know, I wanna make it look not like times, but I wanna make it look kinda like the text that they have here, okay? And you know, if you're not sure how to approach this, you can also, you know, take a lead from one of these built one of these frameworks that have already been built, right? So look at what they did and, you know, you know, borrow some ideas, right? Look at what they did and, and try and emulate some of the things here. And then feel free to change it in your own way too, right? So to make it look like something that you would like to use, okay? So anyway, so thanks for watching and then we'll get started with this in the next video.